Why do you get depressed when you quit smoking? <laughs> Quitting smoking makes me so depressed. <laughs> Stay to the end of this video because I'm going to give you five easy steps to beat the post smoking blues. Do you want to know how to go from this <laughs> to this? I am free! So why do you get depressed when you quit smoking? There's really two things we need to consider. The first thing is the actual science behind why. Why do people get depressed when they quit smoking? And then the second thing we need to go through is what can you actually and practically do about it? So let's start with number one. Why do we get depressed? Well, it's actually very simple. The answer is nicotine withdrawal. That's the primary reason. And really, we could end the, that, the discussion right here. But here's the thing. Here's what I know about many of you. You actually want to know the reasons and the science behind it. So I'm going to give it to you, but I'm going to give it to you really really fast. Why? Because it's really not that important. But here it is really quickly. The simple thing is nicotine. When we smoke nicotine, our brain produces dopamine. Why? Because every time you take a puff of a cigarette, every time our brain sends out a polypeptide, it grabs the nicotine, brings it back to the pleasure sensor in our brain, and our brain releases dopamine, which makes us feel good. You take a drag, you feel good and you do this how many times? How many times do you take a drag on a cigarette? 15, 20? How many cigarettes are you smoking a day? 20? So 250 to 500 times a day, you're training your brain to constantly release dopamine, the thing that makes you feel good. So now you've quit. Less dopamine equals depression. Makes sense. Now for those of you that really, really like technical answers, I'm gonna give you a little bit more because there's a little bit more to this story actually. Your brain, when you quit smoking and it no longer has nicotine in it, your brain produces something called MAO-A. What is that? It's a monoamine oxidase A. That's the actual technical chemical. And what your brain does is when it notices that your dopamine levels are down, it produces this chemical, this MAOA. What does this MOA do? It runs around your body and it eats up chemicals, particularly it eats up chemicals in your brain. And in particular, it eats serotonin. What does serotonin do? Serotonin also makes you feel good. So you quit smoking, your dopamine's down, your brain produces MAOA at a much higher level and it runs around your brain and eats up the serotonin. So your dopamine's down and your serotonin's down and it makes you feel sad. That's what actually happens. Now here's the thing, now you know. And guess what that information did? Nothing, zero zilch. It's almost not even important. It's fascinating and interesting to people like me, but it's not gonna do anything for you, that information. What is gonna do something for you? We need to learn about what we can actually do. So first, the first thing we need to, you need to realize is when are you feeling depression? Well, here's how you, here's how exactly how you know if you're getting depression when you quit smoking. Okay, you're going to one, notice that you feel and experience sleepiness. <sighs> Two, the next thing you're gonna notice is sadness. You're gonna feel sad. <laughs> the third thing is you're gonna have a difficulty concentrating. Four, you're going to experience often anxiety or an empty feeling. Five, you'll often feel fatigued. Oh. Six, changes in appetite. For example, eating more. <laughs> no. 
or you may experience yourself eating less. Seven, you will often notice emotional irritability. Hey, can you pass me your phone? Leave me alone. Eight, you're going to experience a loss of interest. So, if all of this was helpful to know, let me know in the comments. Or if you actually experienced something different as well, or additional sins, put them in the comments and let us know. So now, the most important part, the most important part, what can we actually do about it? Well, the truth is, nothing. But you can manage it. You cannot make it go away. It's a biochemical response to quit smoking if you feel depressed when you quit smoking. But what you can do is learn to manage it. Remember, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. So you have to plan for it. That's the, one of the best things you can do. So the real question becomes, not how do we get rid of the depression, but how do we manage it? So let's talk about what exactly what Samantha did to quit smoking when she came to me. Here's the first thing that Samantha did. The first thing Samantha did was she did my program. Or in other words, she did a quit smoking program. Why is that such a good idea? Because 93% of people that quit for life do so with the aid of a program. And when it comes to depression, you want to do a program that has built into it, part of it, support to deal with people that experience depression when they quit smoking. So the first thing that happened for Samantha was when she signed up and did my program, she had done this before and had explained to me how she had had suffered from depression when she quit smoking. So we built it into her program. So that was the first thing that she did. That's tip number one. Tip number one is, Make sure you do a program or whatever it is you're doing that you are planning on how to deal with the depression. That's the first thing that Samantha did. That was super smart. The second thing, let's talk about the second thing. The next thing Samantha did was she moved her body. That's the next thing we had her do. Why? Because there is a direct relationship between our mood and how we move our body. So we had to make sure part of our program was body movement. Here's why. Mood follows motion. So what you need to understand is when you start to get depressed, when you quit smoking, you need to plan to move your body. It doesn't have to be a workout regimen. It could simply be walking, but you have to move your body. Why? Because mood follows motion. Remember that. Mood follows motion. That was the second thing that Samantha did to make sure that she beat the depression. The third thing, let's now talk about the third thing that Samantha did. The third thing Samantha did was she spent time with family and friends and loved ones. Why? Because we know from neuroscience that when you spend time with people that you like and or love, it increases your serotonin and your dopamine production. The two things that are down when you quit smoking. So that was the third thing that Samantha did, is we made sure that she planned and arranged to have loved ones around her because it raised her mood and helped her fight the feeling depressed when she quit smoking. The fourth thing that Samantha did, let's talk about that now. The fourth thing that Samantha did was we built her a routine, a success routine, a routine that was designed to beat the quit smoking blues. So we built her routine around being around friends and family, around working out, around moving her body, around doing things that made her feel better. We actually planned out ahead of time a routine. Remember, and in this may sound, I may sound like a broken record, but remember, Failure to plan is planning to fail. So we planned her a routine. That was the fourth thing we did, routine. Now let's talk about the fifth and the final thing we did. 
The fifth thing we did with Samantha was we created a reward calendar. What's a reward calendar? It's a way to reward yourself every day that you go without smoking. And it's got to be just a little reward, not something big each day, just something little. And it should not be related to food. Here's why. When we quit smoking, it's a recipe to gain weight. So we don't want our reward to be sweets or sugars. It possibly could be like a big dinner reward. But we found things that she liked, that she felt like were a reward for her. And every day, she got a little reward. Here's why that's important. When we reward ourselves, it causes our brain to release dopamine and increase production of serotonin, which makes us feel better by simply rewarding ourselves on a daily basis. That was the fifth thing that Samantha did to beat the quit smoking blues. Now, let's just quickly summarize all of this. Let's summarize quickly. Why do some people get depressed when they quit smoking? Well, very simply, when you quit smoking, your dopamine levels drop and your brain produces a chemical called MOA-A which goes around and eats up serotonin, which further leads you down that path of depression. So that's why, but what can you do about it? Well, we know what we can do. We can plan for it because not being depressed when you quit smoking is something you have to manage. It's not a light switch. It's one of the reasons why hypnosis is so effective for dealing with depression is because during the hypnotic process, we can set you up to be able to manage these feelings of depression. So the five things that you can do, practically do, one is you can do a program that has built into the program dealing with depression. So for example, in my program, we literally have it set up so that anyone that feels these post quitting blues has support. It needs to be built into whatever program you do. That's the first thing, do a program that has support built into it for depression. Two, the second thing is move your body. Move your body, exercise, move follows motion. Three was spend time with friends and loved ones. Four was create a routine. Why? Because successful people develop good habits. And where do habits come from? Routine. So if you're gonna plan on quitting and beating the post quit smoking blues, you need to develop a routine. You need to plan a routine. And the fifth thing was to create a reward calendar. Why? Because when you create a reward calendar and you reward yourself, your brain increases its production of both dopamine and serotonin, the two things that you are lacking. And just so you know, if you feel like you have more questions or you, this is something you really need help with, in the description below, I put a link to my calendar. You can book yourself in to a free phone consultation with me. It's free. Take advantage of it. In fact, that's what Samantha did. That's how Samantha's whole journey started, was just like you. She was watching a video just like this of me talking, and she took advantage of the link in the description. So take advantage of it. Also, if you want more information, you could go to my website. The link is in the video right here. It's also in the description. You can join my Facebook group tons of inspirational stories, or if you want to see videos of other people that have done my program and talking about it in their own words, join my Facebook group. Also, you can join my Instagram channel. We put all sorts of inspirational things on Instagram to help motivate you to quit smoking. And last, if this is your first time to this channel and you want more tips, tricks, and hacks on how to quit smoking for the rest of your life, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification button. It simply tells you when I post new content, which I do twice a week. Thank you very much for all your time and attention, and I look forward to speaking with you.